Let's talk about some properties of continuity. We've got if b is a real number again, a constant, and f of x and g of x are continuous at x equals c, then the following functions are also continuous at that point c. Our first case, just like with limits, the scalar multiple, you're still continuous uh, when you multiply a function that's continuous by a scalar multiple. So for example, sine of x is continuous everywhere. So if I have two sine of x, it's still continuous. Some are different. As long as the two functions individually are continuous, then if you add or subtract them, they are also continuous. A product, when you multiply two functions together, if they were originally continuous on their own, then their resulting product will also be continuous at whatever points the two individual functions were continuous at. Same thing goes for a quotient. As long as g of c is not equal to zero, because obviously then you would have a discontinuity. Then we have the composite function. So let me take a little bit more time to explain the co composite function. Um, for example, let's say that g of x is x cubed and f of x is the sine of x. So f of g of x means we plug x cubed into the sine of x function. So we get the sine of x cubed. Well, x cubed and sine of x on their own are both continuous everywhere. So the composite function sine of x cubed is also continuous everywhere. And then the converse is true. G of f of x, okay, if we plug f, if we plug sine of x into x cubed, then the result is we are cubing the sine of x. That function is also continuous everywhere. And then inverse, if a function is continuous on an interval with a range of r, if the inverse function exists, then the inverse function is continuous with a domain of r. Remember, inverse functions switch domain and range. So the range of the original is going to be the domain of the inverse function. Let's apply this idea. Let's talk about the continuity of these functions without using our calculator, just based on continuity, our properties of continuity that we just discussed. Okay, so x plus sine of x. I don't know what that looks like graphically, but I'm adding these two functions together. x is continuous everywhere because of the polynomial. Sine of x is continuous everywhere because it's the, the trig function that's continuous everywhere. Uh, so f of x is everywhere continuous. Okay, example B, g of x is three times the tangent of x. This is our scalar multiple rule. So tangent, everywhere that tangent is continuous, then three times tangent is going to, going to be continuous. So g of x is continuous everywhere, except, remember tangent have those exceptions, except for... That one was pi over 2 plus pi k, where k is an integer. Yes, you need to write it out like that. Okay. Let's look at C. C is a quotient problem. H of x is equal to x squared plus 1. x squared plus 1, continuous everywhere. Not an issue. Divided by the cosine of x. Cosine of x itself is continuous everywhere, except for the fact that it's in the denominator now. So h of x is continuous everywhere, except for where cosine of x equals 0. Well, that was the exception for tangent, because cosine's in the denominator of tangent. So cosine equals 0 at pi over 2 plus pi k, k is an integer. Okay, uh, D, okay, example D. It's a composite function. P of x is equal to the sine of 3x. We are plugging 3x into the sine function. 3x is continuous, sine of x is continuous, so p of x is everywhere 
continuous. I am going to start abbreviating continuous. E. E is another composite function. We're talking about the square root of x and x squared plus 1. We plugged that in right there. So x squared plus 1, everywhere continuous because it's a polynomial. Square root of x, that means that um, what's under the square root has to be greater than 0. Well, what's under the square root right here? x squared plus 1. Is x squared plus 1 going to be greater than or equal to 0? Yeah. If you square a number, it's always going to be positive. You add 1 to it, it's still going to be positive. So even though it's a square root function that normally has um, a restricted domain, because of that x squared plus 1, we're good. It's everywhere continuous. And you can check it. I know it says to do it without a calculator, but I want to show this one to you just so you can see that even though it typically has a restricted domain, in this case, because of what's underneath the square root, it is no longer restricted. x squared plus 1. Look at the graph. Here it comes. No holes, no jumps, no issues. Okay, f. f is a product. We're multiplying x cubed and cosine of x. x cubed, polynomial, everywhere continuous. Cosine of x, everywhere continuous trig function. So r of x is everywhere continuous. Okay, m, or excuse me, example g, m of x is equal to the square root of x plus 4. So similar to e, we're taking the square root. x plus 4 is everywhere continuous, but we're taking the square root. So we got to make sure that the square root is defined everywhere. So what's under the square root has to be greater than or equal to 0. And I keep on forgetting the rest of my expression. x plus 4 greater than or equal to 0. Well, then that says this function is only defined for x's that are greater than or equal to negative 4. So m of x is continuous for negative 4 to positive infinity because those are the only places where it's defined. If you try and plug negative 6 into that function, negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2, you can't take the square root of negative 2. m of x is not defined for negative 6. So it can only be continuous where it's defined. So it's, it's defined from negative 4 to infinity, so it's continuous for those values. So you'll see here some practice problems there on textbook page 97 and 98. Give those a shot um, and then come back for the next video.